Screen Directors Playhouse. Stars Ray Milland, Jan Sterling. Production Alias Nick Beale. Director John Farrell. This is the Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present an adaptation of a compelling play on good and evil. Here now is Alias Nick Beale, starring Ray Milland in his original title role and Jan Sterling as Donna. And so to our play, Act One of Alias Nick Beale. May I introduce myself, the Reverend Dr. Thomas Garfield. As a clergyman, I might be considered as somewhat of an authority upon the subject of evil. But still, I offer you the question. Is there really evil in the world, or merely men whose judgments serve them ill? Or are these one and the same thing? Consider. There is evil in the world, and it has many names. Know them now as the thunder sings its hymn to Hades, and the lightning lashes at the soul of man. Know the names of evil, sacred in the black books of the fallen universe. Satan, Lucifer, Tamat, Siva, Ariman, Mephistopheles, Beelzebub, the devil. at year's end, might be an opportune time to consider the problem of evil. Now we do a kind of summing up, a balancing of the books of our lives, a balancing of good and bad. And since we talk of such things, I propose to tell you of an experience I shared with two persons, one you know very well, the former district attorney, Joseph Foster. The other, perhaps you know him, or know him not. His name was Nick Beale. To my knowledge, Nick Beale made his first appearance in the salt mists that blanked the city's waterfront. Like steam rising from the river Styx, the fog wavered and whipped about the China Coast Bar. A sagging pile of timbers that stood upon a pier and faced the bay. In a way, I suppose, it was the end of the earth. And here, Nick Beale was first seen. Hey, where'd you come from? Why, through that door, I believe. How'd you get there? Nothing but pier and water out that way. Is there? Now look, mister, I own this place. I want to know how'd you get in here then I'm addressing the owner of the China Coast. Yeah. Being a person of influence, perhaps you can suggest a man to do an errand for me. What kind of an errand? To deliver a message, this envelope, to a Mr. Joseph Foster. Joseph Foster? Ain't he the DA? He is. But your man will find him at the Central Boys Club not far from here. Well, what do I get out of it? A $20 bill. Well, let's have it. I'll see that your message gets there. He'll be in the office of the Reverend Dr. Thomas Garfield. His name is Joseph Foster, the Central Boys Club. He 
Keep it up, son. Don't break the rhythm. A kid's good with a punching bag. They're all good kids, Slade. Joe Foster, the fighting district attorney. The apostle of decency. You don't belong here, Slade. Anything you want to say, you can say in my office. I thought you'd be anxious to hear. You really want to convict Hanson? I do. How badly? How badly? The last of our big racketeers? A suction pump hitched to every small business in the city? I want him awfully badly, Slade. That's a shame. A man like you could be governor. Could I? That's what my people have been saying. Foster's a good man with our crowd pulling for him. Who knows? Of course, Hanson would have to beat that rap you've Check got. it, Slade. With the right sponsor, you the could... The sponsor would have to be out of jail. He will be. Not this time. Yes, Foster. This time. Then why dangle the governorship at me? Because you'll try again, Foster. You make a real nuisance of yourself. All right, Harry. That's enough on the bag. Now you're licked, Slade. The case against Hanson is cinched. The books? Oh, don't look so surprised, Foster. I heard. You've issued a subpoena for some account books of his. A funny thing happened about those books. They caught fire this morning. I don't believe you. Caught fire. Destroyed. I'll send Hanson to jail, Slade, and after him... Don't threaten. You've got nothing to threaten with. Well, I'll be seeing you, Governor. I'll lick you yet. I'll lick all of you. Are you finished, Joe? Uh, oh, yes, Tom. Martha's waiting for you in the office. Oh, uh, thanks. Joe, I was just telling Dr. Garfield that... Why, what's wrong, dear? Well, that was Slade I was talking to out there. What was he doing? Capitulating? No, he's burned Hanson's books, or uh, had them burned. But they were your trump card in the case. A poor clergyman, Joe. It would seem that you're in trouble. Oh, Joe, what a shame. You know, Dr. Garfield, I think my husband would rather convict Hanson than be governor. I uh, think you phrased it very well, Martha. I'd give my soul to nail him. Your soul, Joe? Oh, I almost forgot. This message came for you, dear. Oh, thank you, Martha. Ah, it'll be good to get home and forget everything for an evening and... What is it, Joe? The note. It says, uh, if you want to nail Hanson, drop around to the China coast at eight tonight. Why, it's almost as if someone heard you. The China Coast? Uh, it's a waterfront bar built on a pier. Is the letter signed? No, no, it isn't. It looks as if I've got an anonymous friend. The China Coast at eight. <laughs> it's a little melodramatic. Yes, yes, but so am I, Martha. So I guess I'll be there. <laughs> Hey, yo, mister. My name is Mr. Beal. How do you get to that door? Swim? I looked out there this afternoon. There ain't even a rowboat. On the contrary, my host. There's an entire universe out there. You'll excuse me. I have a friend to meet. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Foster. You're punctual. So are you, Mr. Uh... May I introduce myself? My card. Nicholas Beal, agent. Agent for what? That depends... Possibly for you. I presumed that when I read your note. Shall we strike directly to the heart of the matter, Mr. Foster? I'd like that very much. You've promised the people a clean city with your conviction of Hanson. But unfortunately, your main evidence is reported destroyed. How do you know about that? It's my business. But supposing it hasn't been destroyed, supposing the books were not... It's too late for supposing. No, Foster. It's never too late to do business with me. What if I could produce those books? And uh, why would you be so obliging? Well, let's say I'm just a humble follower of your work. Wayward boys set right, criminals successfully prosecuted. I, well, I admire you. But of course, I'm not completely altruistic. Of course. Uh, how much would it cost me to put my hands on those books? Well, whatever you think is fair. Well, that's an inviting proposition, Mr. Beale. Then I presume you'll accept it. I'll accept it. If you'll accompany me. Oh, it's uh, so confounded dark in here. Here's the light. You find yourself in the offices of the High Water Canning Company. Well? 
As district attorney, you might just conceivably have an interest in these ledgers. Mr. Beale, I'm interested only in the Hanson books that I... Open them. You'll find Hanson's signature at the bottom of each page. Good Lord. Well, scarcely that. But these are the books. As promised. Mm, these will convict Hanson. Beautiful. And, and not burn. Not even singed. So it appears. Shall we be going? I'm afraid so. Afraid? Well, I have no legal right to take these books. No, uh, no warrant. But, Foster, didn't you say, I believe it was, you'd uh, give your soul to Nail Hanson? Oh, yes, I did, but... Uh... How do you know what I said? Well, I was merely paraphrasing your enthusiasm. This is your goal, Foster. This is what you want more than anything else in the world. But I, I have no warrant. I... So in order to abide by one little law, you'll allow a vicious man to keep on breaking bigger laws. Yes, I'd have Hanson, I'd outmaneuver Slade. And... and all you need is books, Foster. All right, Mr. Beale. We can go now. <laughs> My records of the entire incident are quite complete. As you shall see later on, the affair was sufficient to take a clergyman's curiosity. And my notes indicate that Joseph Foster went immediately to his office with the books. From later research, I was able to ascertain that the person, Nick Beale, returned to the China Coast Bar. Teach you to steal drinks. Now stay out. Get up. Well, how about giving a lady a hand? Sure. You said cheap dive. That's not for you. You alone, handsome? Yeah, I'm alone. Well, so am I. I'm looking for Donna Allen. Well, that's me. Yeah. Say, what do you want anyway? It's what you want, Donna. Sapphires as green as tropic waters and silks to thrill your fingers and sables. What are you talking about? You, a girl, quite beautiful. Who are you? Nick Beale. A cop? No. Silks and sables, Donna, and sapphires. Well... What do you want with me? Why don't you come along and find out? <laughs> sure. Sure, why not? Why not? What have I got to lose? Donna. No. You afraid? Look. Oh. Oh, it's beautiful. Then go in. Gee, what a place. It's decorated with taste, Donna. You remember what taste is. Yeah, it looks like a dame's apartment. It is. Well, whose? Yours. Me. <laughs> Some joke. Look, mister, what's the deal? Why do you talk like that? Like what? You. Good family, two years of college. You put on an act. What do you know about me? Who says it's an act? I do. You play a role, and down on our tramp. Well, this is the new role. Feel that rug under your feet? Run your hand over the furniture. Look at yourself in the mirror and see how you'd look with the makeup scraped off. No, no, you've got the wrong girl. Have I? A fling at the New York stage... An actor who didn't bother telling you he was married. Oh. The struggle at the top of the stairs. Accident, they call well, it. I'm going to get out of here. Just a minute, Donna. Come with me. Mr. Beale. Uh, the man in New York. The actor. Nobody knew and... I met him. When? The night he died. Oh. Well... Look, Donna. Sables. Oh. Try it on. 
Oh, no, no, I shouldn't. It's yours. Here, let me help you. Oh, it's so soft. Look at yourself. Yes. You, in your apartment, surrounded by the things you've always wanted. Oh, I never felt a coat like this. Don't give it up, Donna. Oh, well, what do I have to do? Murder? No, just the opposite. You'll help people. Who? Underprivileged youngsters in a boys club. And a man named Forster. You're going to help him in his career, help him to be governor. My apartment. Look out this window. I wouldn't have to go down there anymore. Not down into that jungle. Is it a deal, Donna? Look, I think it's going to rain. Now you're working for me? Now I'm working for you. The next time you suffer from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, take Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A N A C I N. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30, economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Get Anison at any drug counter. Here now is Act Two of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Alias Nick Beale, starring Ray Milland as Nick and Jan Sterling as Donna. The question of evil and its existence in the world is, unfortunately, not a theoretical one. The pursuit of truth in the matter must inevitably involve us in specific personalities, in the strengths and weaknesses of individual characters. You'll recall we were discussing District Attorney Joseph Foster and the Hanson case. With the assistance of Nick Beale, Joe Foster did convict Hanson. As a clergyman and as a member of the Reform Party, I was naturally pleased, but Joe for all his success, was forced to make a confession to his wife, Martha. Do you want to open the champagne, Joe? Mm, quite a celebration. <laughs> well, don't you think you've earned it, dear? Uh, Martha, there's something I've been meaning to tell you about the Hanson case. I, oh? I, uh, I don't feel quite right about it. Not right? About putting a man like that behind bars? Yes, the end was valid enough. But the means to that end... Uh, well, I'm sure you've done nothing to be ashamed of, Joe. Uh, those books, Hanson's accounts, uh, the ones that uh, convicted him... Uh, what about them? I stole them. Joe! I didn't have a warrant to search the cannery. Uh, do you uh, mind drinking with a criminal? But, Joe, you never did anything like that before. And I never will again, either. Not as long as I have a conscience and a wife. Joe... How did it happen this time? I don't really know. That, uh, that Beale fellow, he made it awfully easy. Uh, excuse me, Martha, I'll take it in the library. Remember the champagne, Joe. Hello. Oh, hello, Larry. Oh, thank you. It was a gratifying conviction. Well, I only hope that... What? Oh... Uh, I haven't considered the governorship. Uh, 
Well, of course, I understand the nomination has to be made soon. Is that your Larry, if I could lick Slade and his gang, I'd do anything. Uh, Larry, Larry, give me a little time. I'll phone you back. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you. You've made me very proud. Congratulations, Forster. Deal. The governorship. You're moving fast. Who let you in here? Now, is this the hospitality that friends deserve? Joe, shall I bring the champagne? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, Martha. Uh, Mr. Beale, my wife. Pleasure, Mrs. Forster. You, you must be very proud of your husband. He's going to be our next governor. Why, Joe? Now, Lawrence Evans just phoned, Martha. The Reform Party wants me to run. Well, I... I suppose I should feel elated. Yes, you should. We'll discuss it later, Joe. And in the meantime, Foster, you remember the Hanson books had a price on them. Uh, yes, whatever we considered fair under the circumstances. I'm prepared to pay. Well, well real integrity. First completely honest person I've met in a long time. That's why I'm interested in you. How much do you want, Mr. Beale? Well, let's consider the circumstances. Your friends obviously don't know how you convicted Hanson. They don't know that illegal methods were used. Is this blackmail, Mr. Beale? Uh, no, no. Uh, merely pointing out of the facts. Actually, Forster, we'll call it square. I'd prefer to pay. No, instead of taking money from you, I want you to take this envelope. What's in it? $25,000. I'd like to contribute to your campaign expenses. My husband hasn't decided to run. He will. And even if he does, we don't need your help. Does she run things around here, Forster? I think she's right. No strings attached? No, Mr. Beale. You want to lick Slade. The beginning is on the table, the start of your campaign. Slade controls the whole southwest part of the state. With money, you just might defeat him. Without it, you certainly won't. Uh, Martha, oh, I... Oh, please, Joe. But if the party caucus decides it wants me to run, uh, I'll need money. I, I'll, uh... uh... Martha... It's up to you, Joe. Yes, Joe, it's up to you. Hello? Yes, this is Miss Allen. Uh, I want to have some ice sent up. Right away, please. Hmm? You're hitting that bottle too much. Nick. Cut out the drinking. You're going to work, Donna. You give me the creeps. How do you get in here? You like it here? Of course I like it. Then do as you're told. Don't ask questions. I'm sorry. That's better. Tomorrow you'll go to the Central Boys Club. You'll give them a check for $500. For $500? I'll give them a check for $500. $500, Mr. Foster. There you are. That's a lot of money, Miss Allen. <laughs> I'm sorry it isn't more. I hope it'll help you and Dr. Garfield in your work. Have no fear of that. I just hope that you'll let me work with you. You see, I've missed doing social work so much since I moved here, and, well, I'd sort of like to help, too. I think, Miss Allen, you're an answer to many prayers. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll see to the boy. Of course. Mr. Foster, there's only one condition to the gift. Hmm? What's that? Well, it's rather personal, but... Well, I'd sort of like to straighten your tie. Oh, I... Well, I'm afraid I'm not very presentable. Uh, well, it doesn't quite match your personality. You should wear something colorful and gay. <laughs> do, you, do you think so? <laughs> uh, the next time you go shopping for ties, why don't you take me along, huh? Now, that's a date. Hello, Foster. Well, Mr. Beale. Uh, I hear you're looking for me. Yes, yes, I called the China Coast. I wanted to... Uh... Oh, pardon me, uh, Miss Allen, this is Mr. Beale. How do you do? How do you do? I'll leave you two men to talk. Goodbye, Mr. Foster. Goodbye, Miss Allen. Uh, Mr. Beale, I, uh, I want to return the money you gave me. I see. Your wife? My wife has nothing to do with this. You need the money for your campaign. I haven't even been nominated yet. They're holding the nomination meeting tonight, aren't they? Well, yes, but that's no sign that... They're... You'll be nominated, all right. Then we'll talk about the money. Boys are waiting, Joe. We'll... Well, who's this? My name is Nick Beale. Uh, this is my co-worker at the club, Reverend Garfield. Mr. Beale, have we... Have we met before? No. No, we haven't. Strange. Your face, it reminds me of... 
someone, something. One of those faces? On the contrary. It's an extraordinary face. Quite medieval, like a woodcut. Something on parchment. Have you ever had your portrait painted, Mr. Beale? Ah, uh, yes, some time ago. Perhaps we've passed close to one another at some time, Dr. Garfield, but we've never collided. No, I guess not. Not until now. Well, Joe, the boys are waiting outside. Uh, you see, Mr. Beale, every afternoon, someone reads a passage from the Bible. Uh, perhaps uh, you would do us the honor today. Me? No. No, I don't know anything about that stuff. I've marked the passage right here. It's your book. Read it yourself. Very well. Uh, gentlemen, today, gentlemen, we read one of the Psalms of David. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Know the names of evil, sacred in the black book of the fallen universe. Satan, Lucifer... Tamat, Siva, Araman, Mephistopheles, Beelzebub, the devil. third act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Alias Nick Beale continues in just a moment. But now, here's a word from RCA Victor. There's only one thing on earth more enjoyable than an RCA Victor TV set, and that's an RCA Victor TV radio phonograph combination. Just ask any family who got one for Christmas. RCA Victor packs the finest of three entertainment worlds into these magnificent combinations. You get two powerful radios, AM and FM by RCA Victor, world leader in radio. You get superb Victrola phonograph with two changers to play all record speeds by RCA Victor, first in recorded music. And you get million-proof TV, proven in well over a million homes, by RCA Victor, first in television. You'd think to look at these combinations with their beautiful cabinets and their fabulous contents that they were intended for millionaires only. Instead as your RCA Victor dealer will show you specifically, they actually cost much, much less than you'd pay for comparable instruments separately. Here's wishing you a happy new year with the happiest instrument on earth, an RCA Victor combination. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's All-Star Festival, brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Alias Nick Beale, starring Ray Milland and Jan Sterling, will continue in just a moment after a short pause for station identification. for the third. As Donna. The discussion of evil in the world which I have proposed is by no means a discussion of theology. 
The story which I tell is a consideration of evil in its, uh, what shall I say, its more practical aspects. We have discussed certain events of the afternoon on which I first met Nick Beard. I shall continue by relating the events of that evening when Joseph Foster received a caller, a Mr. Finch. Uh, Mr. Finch, my wife and I have a social engagement. I'm afraid that uh, I... That's all right, Mr. Foster. I haven't got much time either. I've got to get out of town. If you'll just explain. Uh, look, I was the bookkeeper at the Highwater Kenry. The Highwater... Then you must have been connected with Hanson. I just kept his books on the side, Mr. Foster. Nothing illegal. Well, then why didn't you come forward during the trial? Well, you ought to know why. You would have received police protection, Mr. Finch. Maybe. But why would you want me to testify when you knew those books were fake? Fake? Well, sure, they were fake. I burned the real ones myself. I saw every page go up in smoke. But that's impossible. <laughs> Look, you sure got me in a spot. I know that you had a rig up some way getting Hanson, but now they think I didn't burn the books. I need traveling money fast. Mr. Finch, I warn you that the district attorney isn't a very safe subject for blackmail. Well, okay, but I'll have to have that police protection then. <laughs> One way or the other, you help me or the cops help me. Is Nick Beale connected with this? I don't know anybody named Beale. Joe, the whites have arrived. Oh, I'll be right there, Martha. I can't talk further right now, Mr. Finch. Can you be in my office at 10 o'clock tonight? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Very well. And I'll see that Mr. Beale is there, too. Uh, m Mr. Beale. Yes, Mr. Finch? Well, I did. Did you bring what I asked for? I found the pipe stand, just like you said, on Forster's desk. There were seven pipes. I took this one. Thank you, Mr. Finch. You may carry it. I sure can use that money you promised me. Was there any message, Mr. Finch? Oh, he says he wants to meet me in his office at ten tonight. He wants you to be there, too. Then there's nothing more to be done, is there? <laughs> just my money. Then come along, Mr. Finch, and I'll get it. <laughs> you know, the way he acted, Mr. Beale, I'd sway he thought the books were the real thing, but I burned them with my own... Ah! Nick, I've talked to Hanson's bookkeeper. So what? He says the books were burned, that the ones I produced in court were faked. They worked, didn't they? That's beside the point. What did the bookkeeper want? Traveling money. Shakedown? I'm not sure. Why else would he pick tonight? Tonight the party's deciding on his candidate for governor. I don't know, but I regret ever having been involved with you. I have your money here, the 25000 Please take it back. What's the fuss over the books? What if they were faked? I'd have to admit a mistrial and set Hanson free. And blow the governorship sky high? That doesn't matter. I've prided myself on being a man of conscience. I intend to act according to that conscience. Hello? Hello, Joe? Oh, hello, Larry. Did you know the committee was meeting? Uh, yes, yes, I knew the committee was uh, meeting. They've nominated you for voter. Oh, they... Oh, they have? Your chance to lick Slade. Well, uh... Please tell the committee uh, I'd be uh, very pleased to accept the nomination. <laughs> you know, Forster, I might even see my way clear to make that $50,000. Uh, will you check these posters, please, Miss Allen? Yes, they'll be fine, but I think you better print Mr. Foster's name in uh, blue instead of silver. Right. You take to politics very well, Miss Allen. Why, thank you, Dr. Garfield. Oh, I'm having a wonderful time. And doing a service for my state, too. Uh, Nick, I, I believe I'm late. Oh, hello, Donna. Hello, Mr. Foster. Mr. Beale. Hello, Miss Allen. Foster, the Evans Committee is expecting you. Oh, let them wait. Donna, you're lucky you've never made a speech to 2,000 women. The governor was magnificent. I knew he'd be. Ah, uh, Donna, I wish everybody had as much faith in me as you do. Everybody doesn't know you as well as I do. Thank you. Come on, Nick. Oh, Miss Allen. Yes? Don't overplay it, sugar. Coming, Foster. Oh, we've been waiting for you, Joe. Uh, sorry, Larry, what's up? We've been examining the Stafford report. What about it? It indicates you'll run 100,000 votes short of a victory. 
What can we do to change that? Just keep working and hope that something happens. I think we'll have to do something more than that, Mr. Evans. And what would you suggest, Mr. Beale? Make a deal with Slade and his downstate machine. Nick, you're not serious. You want to win, don't you? Not that much. I'm surprised you'd make such a suggestion. Gentlemen, shall we continue with the meeting? Well, Foster, that's the last committee man gone. And your chances for the governor's mansion gone with it. Oh, things aren't that bad. No, no. As a matter of fact, they aren't. What do you mean? I mean, whether you like the Slade deal or not, it's already made. What? I set it up yesterday. You? Slade's going to play ball. You're as good as in. Get out of my office. All right. Sure. But first, first you're going to listen to me. The trouble with your kind, Foster, is that you're colorblind. It's all white or black. No grays, no in-betweens. Well, if you value those ideals of yours, you better start seeing the grays. You want to give the people of the state a square deal, okay. But first you have to be governor. And first you have to be elected. And to do that, you have to play the gray side to beat the black. Either that, or the black wins. Are you through? For now, yes. Donna? Yes? You're going to have a date tonight. Who with? The next governor. I'll drop by your place and explain things. In the meantime, remember you're a lady. How can I forget? Oh. Dr. Garfield. Mr. B. I've been thinking about you. Still trying to remember this face of mine? Yes. Isn't it strange? It's not you. Not your face. It's as if you were a shadow. And I'm trying to remember the substance that casts the shadow. Well, sometime we'll talk about it. Just you and I. Sometime. When the shadow and substance come together. Oh, it's you. It's me. A visit from your benefactor, Donna. Looks as if you were wrong about tonight. Foster hasn't phoned. He won't phone. He'll come directly here. What makes you so sure? He's had a fight with his wife. He's told her that I've made an alliance between himself and a man named Slade. She's acted very sanctimonious. She's told Foster it'd be best to give up the governorship. Now he's confused, alone. He remembers your sweetness and admiration. He'll come here. He's got nowhere else to go. Shall I be nice to him? You'll do exactly as I say. Listen, Donna, and remember. Yes. He'll ask your advice about the deal with Slade. I approve. Not right away. First you ask what his wife thinks. When he tells you, you'll become angry. Is she trying to wreck his career? Is she trying to wreck your career? Then he'll say he wishes that Martha felt the way you do. And that, Donna, is the cue for your big speech. Go on, I'm a quick study. And get this. Joseph, I have a confession to make. Sometimes I wish we weren't married so that we could... Oh, I've shocked you, haven't I? I've shocked you, haven't I? Then he answers, no, no, you haven't, Donna, because I have a confession of my own. Each day when I go to campaign headquarters, I'm afraid you won't be there. Then when I see you, I know everything's all right. And the times you've had lunch together, do you remember how many, Donna? Uh, six. And each a red-letter day in my life. Now you. You say, Joseph, don't say anymore. Mm, Joseph, don't say anymore. But I have to. It's all bubbling out. Now, Donna, you. No, Joseph, no. And he says, what's the matter? And you, Donna, I'm frightened. He says, there's nothing to be frightened of. But you take his arm. Please, Joseph, go now. I'll see you in the morning, darling. Then he says, I'll be counting the minutes. Brother, how corny can you get? Don't be a critic, Donna. Just an actress. But he isn't going to say any of those things. Your guest has arrived. Let him in, Donna. I'll wait in the other room. Uh, Donna, I... I... Oh, hello, Joseph. I happened to be in the neighborhood, and I thought... Uh... Oh, please come in. I'm glad you came. I was lonely. Well, sit down, Joseph. Thank you. Oh, you look tired. Yes, I am. Is it that deal Nick made with the machine? Yes. Uh, Donna... What do you think about Slade? Me? 
Well, I shouldn't advise you, Joseph. What does Martha think? She's very much opposed to the alliance. She doesn't realize how important it is that you win. Important for the state. She accused me of... of compromising with everything I detested. But, Joseph, doesn't she know she's wrecking your political career? Oh, Donna, I wish Martha felt the way you do. Oh. Joseph, I have a confession to make. Sometimes I wish that you weren't married so that we could... I've shocked you, haven't I? No. No, you haven't. I have a confession of my own. Each morning when I go to campaign headquarters, I'm afraid you won't be there. And then when I see you, everything's all right again. And the times we've had lunch... Do you remember how many? Six. Six. And each each one a red letter letter day in my memory. memory. Joseph, don't say anything more. What's What's the the matter? matter? I'm frightened. Well, there's There's nothing nothing to be frightened frightened of. Joseph, look, I'll see you in the morning. All right, right, Donna. Donna. I'll be be counting counting the the minutes. minutes. Goodbye. <laughs> you weren't bad, Donna. Who are you? What are you? Putting speeches in people's mouths. Pushing nice old guys around. Pushing me around. You don't like it? Then get out. Back to the China coast. Oh, no. And stay in line. You're doing a good job, Donna. This is the job you were made for. You'll run for election. <laughs> Buster, Dr. Garfield, some more returns. Thank you, Mr. Beale. Oh, Joe. Yes, Larry. It looks bad. The 21st and 22nd districts belong to the Slade machine. When they come in, they're liable to swamp us right out. Well, maybe not. Hey, listen, listen, everybody. Report for the 22nd district. Buster leads by 60,984. What? Yeah! Joseph, that's a, a miraculous margin. It should since the election. Yes, that's Slade's territory. You didn't make any arrangement with him, did you? No, Larry, I didn't. Uh, Joe? Yes, Tom? Look who just came in. That's Slade, isn't it? Yes, it is. Joe, what's the meaning of this? I'm with you, Foster. Don't get into a panic. Well, Governor. Hello, Slade. Looks like we're in business. Hello, Evans. Anything from the 21st yet? Slade. In business. What does that mean? Is what I said. I wouldn't worry about the 21st, Foster. That 50 grand you gave me will pay off about three votes to the dollar. Joe, did you give this man $50,000? I did, Larry. Where'd you get it? I gave it to him. You, Beale. I should have known. It was just a loan. I, I'll pay it back. Everybody, listen, everybody! Here it is, a flash. The opposition just gave up. The election has been conceded. Joseph Foster is our next governor. Larry, Larry, if you'll just let me explain. You're governor now. You don't have to explain to anybody. But Slade and Beale. Good night, Joseph. Don't worry, Foster. They'll come around. How about a little celebration, everybody? Party's on me. You coming, Joe? Yes, yes, in a minute. Oh, Donna, Donna. Darling, darling, you're governor. You did it. Oh, no, let's let's go where we can talk alone. Here, no, in this, this room. Oh, Joseph, this is no time to look so gloomy. Lawrence Evans. He walked out on me tonight. The Slade deal. But it's all over now. It isn't over. I still have to justify myself. Oh, Donna, I, I want to be governor. The flattery, the authority, the prestige. I, I sound very egotistical, don't I? No, you don't. You sound very human, and I know you'll do the best job you can. I wonder, this Slade and Nick Beale. Look, get away from Nick, Joseph. He's... Yes? Well, nothing. I'm just silly. Look, they're waiting for you, the celebration. You go on, I'll join you in a minute, hmm? All right, Tom. Uh, sure. <laughs> Donna? Oh. Well, Nick? That was quite a performance. He's in trouble. Yes, he is. Why don't you leave him alone? What's Foster ever done to you? Nothing. Look, he's decent and good. Why don't you forget about him? I'll forget about him, too. You know, you and I, Nick, we could have a lot of fun together. Why, you stupid tramp. (gasps) I'll toss you back in the gutter where you belong. Yes, you can forget Foster, and I'm taking care of him myself tonight. Glad you're here, Nick. 
I wanted to talk to you. Is this victory, Foster? The governor sits alone in his darkened home, deserted by all but his friends? Who are my friends? Well, me, for one. I'm the only friend you need. That's very funny. My wife has left me, you know. Martha? Oh, that's too bad. It's taken me that to make me realize what a complete mess you've got me into. It's not me, Foster. It's your reform party, pals. Have you seen the late papers? No. They've renounced you? What? Kicked the new governor right out of the party. Ah, so it's happened. Well, I'm not surprised. I've got a lot of making up to do. We're finished, Nick. Are we? You don't know how much trouble you're in. No, I'm afraid I do. No, you don't. You remember Mr. Finch, Hanson's bookkeeper? Well, he's dead. They found his body at the waterfront. Remember the coroner's verdict? Yes, accidental. Well, it isn't accidental anymore. It's murder. Why didn't I hear about this? Because somehow, Foster, the police have linked you to the killing. That's impossible. Someone tipped them that Finch was in your home the night he was killed, and they found something on his body, a pipe. A pipe that's been traced to a set of seven given to you three years ago. Oh, ridiculous. The pipe set is right here on my desk. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six... I guess this is going to kind of interfere with your being governor. You know, for weeks I've had a feeling that I'd never really make it. Forget the feeling, Foster. I can pull you out of this. Oh. Uh -huh. Now you're anxious to do business with me again, aren't you? You know, I'm getting a little tired of sticking out my neck and then having you chop at it. This time I'd like some protection. And I'd like it in writing. <sighs> Write out your terms. I already have. Here. It includes a small reward for services rendered. The post of Keeper of the State Seal. But that doesn't even pay a salary. I don't mind. Oh, and there's a sort of default clause, too. You'd better read it. Uh, in case I fail to make the above appointment, I do hereby agree to accompany the aforesaid Nicholas Beale to the island of Almas Perdidas. Almas Perdidas? What island is that? Just an island. What difference does it make? You'll give me the state job the minute you become governor. Well, what about your end of the bargain, the, the, the Finch affair? Sign the agreement. Hand me that pen. Yeah. There you are. Fine, clear signature. Uh, Nick, the murder, Finch. Oh, the police will come here. They'll check the pipes in your desk rack. Then they'll cross you off the list. But how? If a pipe is missing, what... Count them, Foster. <laughs> well, I just did. Count them again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're jittery, Foster. You should be on top of the world. Yes, I... Uh, well, this is quite a step in a man's life. Relax. In another half hour, you'll be the governor. Yes. Is it a good feeling, Foster? The governor-elect in the governor's mansion, the last delicious waiting before the inauguration? No, it's not a good feeling. But look how far you've come, from the crime-busting district attorney to the governor of the state. How very far I've come. The only friend in the audience outside is Tom Garfield, not even Donna. Oh, forget it. Oh, I wanted to tell you... Slade and the boys say they'd like a couple of additional baubles. What is it now? Uh, two members on the Power Commission, two more on the Marshlands Committee, and the chairman of the Liquor Control Board. Well, that's almost every key post. Uh, not quite. You still have the Fish and Game Commission. And me as Keeper of the State Seal, unless you prefer the forfeit clause. You'll get what you want. I'm sure I will. Oh, and I almost forgot. The fellows think you ought to drop that 200000 for boys' clubs. No, Nick. That stays. What do you care? You've got what you wanted. This isn't the way I wanted it. Oh, cut it out, Foster. You know what's wrong with you? You still think of yourself as a reformer. I've done what I thought was right. You've made yourself governor. You took every shortcut, every compromise, every means. But I, I didn't mean to. Uh, I can't be what you say I am. <laughs> no? Try to change back. Just try. Oh, Mr. Foster, the ceremony's about to begin, sir. Oh, very well. Nick? Nick, you represent everything I've ever struggled against. And you've made one mistake. You think I've stopped struggling. I know it. They're waiting for you, Foster. I'll stay here and listen to your speech on the radio. Don't be too surprised, Nick. <laughs> Ladies 
discharge the duties of the office of governor according to the best of my ability. Mr. Justice, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a few weeks ago, the Reform Party issued a statement renouncing me for certain political commitments I allegedly made. I never answered that statement because it is absolutely true. <laughs> to my eternal shame, I did make alliances with various groups of corrupt figures. Now I realize those alliances will prevent me from properly serving my state. Therefore, I resign the governorship in favor of an honest man, the lieutenant governor, who was once my friend. Oh, my well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you, you have just heard what is certainly the most astounding inaugural address in the, in the history of this, or I believe any other state. Uh, as you heard your... How did you like my speech, Nick? Fine. Impressive. Virtue triumphant. It uh, doesn't uh, disappoint you? Not at all. Hmm. Your plans haven't quite worked out. On the contrary, Foster, they've worked very well. What are your plans now? I intend to find my wife. But first, there's an agreement to be settled. A man of integrity such as yourself, you wouldn't ignore a contract. We can go into that later. No, Foster. Now. You failed to make me keeper of the state seal. In forfeiture, you must accompany me to the island of Almas Perdidas. I have no time now. It's a short journey. My uh, last commitment? After this, you'll be free. Free. Now, let's go, Nick. We'll leave by the back door. Joseph! Donna, what are you doing here? Please, Joseph, get away from Nick. Your speech, you did right. Now you're free. Donna, your clothes. Everything else belongs to Nick. I'm breaking away, Joseph. You can do it, too. Thank you, Donna. But first... I must pay a visit to the island of Almas Perdidas. Come along, Foster. Our transportation's waiting on the China coast. <laughs> Goodbye, Donna. <laughs> Miss Allen, was Joseph here? Dr. Garfield, he just left. Through there with Nick Beale. He's taking Joseph somewhere, somewhere terrible. My dear, you're almost hysterical. <laughs> Where is this place? He called it the island of... Almas Perdida. Why, that's Spanish. It means... <laughs> means the island of lost souls. Now, he's an evil man, Dr. Garfield. He's a devil. A devil? Yes. I'm sorry. Do you know where they're going from here? Yes. <laughs> Nick said the China coast. <laughs> Oh, why can't he drive fast? Miss Allen, you call Nick Beale a devil. Did you mean that literally? Oh, no, not in the horns and tail kind of way. Perhaps I remember how he was afraid to read this book. The Bible? The Bible, and that satanic cast of countenance. The fallen angel, Lucifer. Oh, but Dr. Garfield, this is the 20th century. Nobody believes in those things anymore. Perhaps the devil also knows it's the 20th century. Oh. This is it. The China coast. Here, driver. Come on, Miss Allen. This confounded fog. Wait, I think I saw something moving ahead. Uh, they might be at the end of the pier. Oh. Oh, look, Joseph! Donna, Tom! Oh, thank God we're in time. God's in his heaven, Donna. I'm here. Joe, you're not going with Beale. You're wrong, Garfield. He's given his word on paper, haven't you, Foster? I have. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't count. The contract cannot be broken. I don't believe there is a contract, Mr. Beale. No? Take a look. Everything is in order. My company has negotiated quite a few of these. I see. Yes, it appears that he did sign your paper. What company do you represent, Mr. Beale? A trading company. Trading in what? In people of a certain nature. I also represent a trading company, Mr. Beale. It seems that we're competitors. But my firm has won out in this particular deal. My contract, please. Of course. Do you mind if I place it in this Bible? Now take your contract, Mr. Beale. Your contract. And the book. Now. Come on, Foster, we are late. Not without the contract. Give me the Bible, Tom. Now, Nick, I'm ready, if you are. No, not with that book. The book goes with me, Nick. 
You've jockeyed me into a nice little morality play, haven't you? The same old props. It's always been bell and candle and that worn-out book of yours. Are we going, Nick? No. No, we're not going. Oh, Joseph. It's all right, Miss Allen. It's all right. You've saved yourself, Foster, just in time. You won't be going this time. Garfield's firm has won this one after all. We'll win others, too. But you won't win all of them. Some of them belong to me. And perhaps Foster and Donna will meet again one day when I can be of service to you. We'll be waiting for another battle. And who'll win? Who'll win? You or me? So ends our Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Alias Nick Beale. Our stars will return in just a moment. Next Thursday, the Screen Director's Playhouse brings an adventure tale taken from the pages of a vivid history. Our motion picture story for the first time on the air is Prince of Foxes, directed by Henry King. And in the starring role at his dashing best will be the distinguished Douglas Fairbanks. And supporting him will be the 20th century Fox starlet, Joyce McKenzie. And now, here again are tonight's stars, Ray Milland and Jan Sterling. <laughs> well, Ray, tonight you were everything a devil ought to be. Well, thank you, Jan. Thank you. But I learned all about that sort of thing from a devilishly fine director. Ladies and gentlemen, John Farrow, who directed alias Nick Beale, was supposed to be with us tonight. But illness has kept him at home. So I'm afraid you've been done out of an opportunity of meeting one of Hollywood's finest motion picture artists. Ray, I talked to John Farrow on the phone this afternoon, and, uh, you know, he pointed out something about alias Nick Beale that I didn't even realize. What was that, Jan? Well, that the leading man and the leading lady didn't exchange a single embrace, not a single kiss. There wasn't even a love scene. Why, Jan, I thought you knew that's the most devilish part of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Jan. Good night, everyone. Good night. Nick Beale was presented through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, whose current release is Mr. Music, starring Bing Crosby, who is celebrating his 20th year in show business. Ray Milland will shortly be seen in the Paramount picture, Something to Live For, and Jan Sterling will soon appear in the Paramount film, Ace in the Hole. Tonight's cast included Theodore Von Eltz as Joseph Foster, Herbert Butterfield as Reverend Garfield, Lois Corbett as Martha Foster, Frank Gerstel as Larry Evans, Tony Barrett as Finch, Jack Crucian as the bartender, and Raymond Burr as Slade. Alias Nick Beale was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons. The Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Carn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next Thursday when, for the first time on the air, we present Prince of Foxes, starring Douglas Fairbanks with Joyce McKenzie and screen director Henry King. Listen again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening to the one and only Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night feature of the all-star festival. 
Join Archie and the gang at Duffy's Tavern tomorrow night on NBC.